So this is a picture of my eye indoors with the pupil somewhat dilated. And here's my eye outdoors with the pupil somewhat constricted. So what's going on here? What's the physiology? So now we're considering the iris, which extends from the ciliary muscles, part of the choroid layer, and the pupil, which is simply the gap in between the iris diaphragm. Now if we look at the eye from the, uh, from the front, here we have roughly an eye. So there we have an eye. And the iris is the coloured component and the pupil's in the middle. So if you have blue eyes then that's going to be bluish. It's the coloured part of the eye, the iris. And the pupil actually looks um, dark because the pupil is going through to the inside of the eye and there are pigmented layers of the retina and pigmented layers in the choroid so the light is not reflected out of the eye again. So the light that's not used for generating the electrical nerve impulses, that's not used for transduction, it's absorbed by the pigmented layers inside the eye so you don't get a lot of light coming out from the eye so it looks dark in colour. Now, the amazing thing about the pupil, of course, is it uh, can constrict and it can dilate. So let's first of all think about constriction of the pupil. Pupil constriction. So what's happening when the pupils constrict? Well, pupil constriction is generated by circular fibres. So if we think about the iris here, imagine that's the iris. With the pupil in the middle. Now the circular fibres around about the... Well, around about in the iris, the circular fibres. So the circular fibres here, smooth muscle fibres. And when these circular muscle fibres contract that will reduce the size of the pupil. There's going to be constriction. These are called the sphincter pupillae muscles. So as these contract, that's going to reduce the size of the pupil. So contraction of the sphincter pupillae or the pupillae muscles, sphincter pupillae muscles, will bring that in, will contract it down the way. And this is a parasympathetic activity. It's brought about by parasympathetic stimulation, primarily by the third cranial nerve, it's brought about by the nerve called the ocular motor nerve, which is the third cranial nerve arising from the uh, midbrain and going into the eye. It's the same nerve that actually controls a different branch but the same nerve that controlled the ciliary muscles. So the contraction of the circular muscles is reducing the size of the pupil. Contraction of the sphincter pupillae muscles. We get contraction of the pupil. Now there can be abnormal contraction of the pupil that we have to look out for. For example, in people who've taken overdose of opiates, the pupils can become very small, like pinpoint pupils. And it will be the same on both sides. Both pupils will be pinpoint and opiate overdose. Or it can indicate rarer conditions such as hemorrhage in the pons of the brain stem. Or... Another one is organophosphate poisoning can, can give a pinpoint pupil. So important clinical indicator. In all those conditions of course both pupils will be equal in both eyes. And also constriction of the pupil will be brought about if you hold your finger out and bring it closer to someone's eyes and ask them to focus on it. So as we try to focus on close objects 
the pupil will also narrow and the lens will thicken. And the reason for this is that if the pupil is more narrow, we'll get better depth of field of our image when we're looking at close-up objects, as photographers amongst you will know. Now the converse of constriction, of course, is pupil dilation. The pupils can also dilate. So when we go into a dark room, the pupils will dilate to let more light in. Just the same as when we're in bright sunlight, the pupils will naturally constrict to let less light in to control the amount of light going into the eyes. Now, pupil dilation is brought about by contraction of radial fibres called dilator pupillae muscles. So if we think about the outside of the iris again, there's also radial muscles in this direction. In that direction. And when these muscles contract and get shorter, that's going to pull the pupil, going to open the pupil, going to dilate the pupil. So that's contraction of the radial fibres, the dilator pupillae. And the interesting thing about this is this is under sympathetic control. The sympathetic nervous system. That widens and dilates the pupils. So the sympathetic nervous system, of course, is the fight or flight, emergency situations or excitement. We get dilation. Now, as we've said, this will naturally happen when we go into dark areas to let more light in, just as constriction will naturally happen when we're in bright light. But there's also clinical indicators, or well, it can be useful as a clinical indicator if someone's got dilated pupils. So drugs such as atropine will dilate pupils, but so will drugs that stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, such as methamphetamine, and uh, cocaine, for example, and some hallucinogens such as mescaline will do the same. So also a useful clinical indicator. Now, one of the key things about our observations of pupils is to note whether they are equal or not. So normally, if we shine a light in one eye, if we shine a light in one eye, if we think about both eyes here, there we have an eye there and an eye there. And if we shine a light in one eye, then we would expect both pupils to constrict. And if, another, if one pupil dilates, we would expect them both to dilate. It would always happen together. So if you shine a light into that eye, yes, that pupil will dilate, will uh, constrict if you shine a light in, but that one will as well. They're supposed to be the same. Now, if one pupil is wider than the other, that's a sign that there's usually something wrong within the central nervous system. So it's quite, a, quite an important clinical indicator. So, for example, after a head injury, there might be compression of the oculomotor nerve on one side. Now, the oculomotor nerves don't cross over. So if the right pupil is not responding properly to light, if it's becoming sluggish or dilated, that indicates pressure on the right side of the brain. And in the same way, if the left pupil is not responding to light and the left pupil becomes dilated, then that means it's the left side of the brain where the problem is developing. So an important clinical indicator. We want to look at how the pupils are constricting, how quickly they constrict, but above all, making sure that they are equal. But in the physiological situations, it's the parasympathetic that's causing the constriction and the sympathetic, which is causing the dilation. The circular fibres constricting to bring about the constriction and the radial fibres constricting to bring about the dilation. <laughs>